Hey guys and welcome to a slightly different video today. We're going to be going over my van conversion for my Kangoo. There's a few things we've got to go over. I'm going to show you exactly how I've done things and this is how people have recommended me to do things and also show you my, my setup. So let's go. So first things first, the whole idea of this um, was to be able to store uh, my mountain bike and also have a fold down bed. Um, the idea of the fold down bed was so that I could actually still fit in two bikes for if I ever wanted to take someone with me. Uh, so that's exactly what I have done. So for the first phase of the build, I had to remove the bulkhead and it was fairly straightforward up until I had to remove two certain bolts and nobody seemed to know what they were. So we ended up having to angle grind these out. Uh, so it was a bit of a nightmare and I had to take this to my friend Pete because I didn't have an angle grinder at the time and he wore some Enduro goggles to use the angle grinder to take them out. Sunday. The bulkhead was fairly straightforward other than this. It's just literally bolts all the way around the back and the front. You just undo all of them and then it just pulls apart. The next part was the insulating and one of the first things that I should have done was the floor and it was one of those things that I didn't realize until I got pretty much to the end. So remove the floor panels and then just insulated the floor and using a insulation tape as well just to seal the gaps between the insulation roll. This insulation roll is like bubble wrap um, and you just apply this using a spray adhesive that you would use for the carpet and it goes on really easily and I pretty much ended up covering the whole van inside with it um, and that's just how I got told to do it whether it's the right thing to do I'm not 100% sure um, but the whole point of me using the van is for literally one night at a time every couple of months so it's nothing like I'm going to be staying in here permanently. I covered all of the gaps and if there's any holes I used a recycled plastic bottle insulation to fill any of the gaps and the crevices. Went over the top then with the insulation roll and then taped between the gaps. One thing I should mention is everything that I've used, materials, tapes, insulation, it's all gonna be in the description below and including the bike mount with the discount code. So this one was the old wheel arch. We've taken uh, that out. I'm gonna replace it, because obviously we're gonna have the fold-up bed. And we're replacing that wheel arch with basically a custom one. So we can then have that bed up the side wall. So the replacement wheel arch is temporarily in, and then that's the bed. It's gonna fold down. We've just gotta extend it. So the next thing was the carpeting and it's a four way stretch carpet and I purchased this off eBay. I ended up needing 10 meters, I think it was in the end, uh, to cover the whole lot. And the whole van was originally ply line. So what I've done is, is I ended up carpeting over the ply wood, um, whereas some people might leave the ply line in and then just carpet over the top. Um, I carpeted each individual piece. Once the bubble wrap insulation was on, uh, basically all you would do then is use the carpet over the top, um, unless obviously you've done it on the ply. You use the spray adhesive that comes with the carpet and you just spray it on, it's like a webbing, and then you apply the carpet. It's a little bit more forgiving than like normal house carpet um, because it does stretch. So uh, one thing I would suggest is make sure that you've got some tension throughout the carpet and you just gently doing it bit by bit rather than try and do a massive piece in one go. Also if you are carpeting the whole lot is start from top and work your way down to the bottom, don't do it the other way. Wait for the adhesive to set before you start moving down to the next part. So if you've absolutely balls up the side like I have, um, I did try taping it but it did nothing for it. Um, so if you end up cutting another strip out, similar to one like this, you can get it and push it underneath the fold. Then if you overlay it over the top and get a Stanley blade and cut straight down over the two of them, uh, then you'll be able to join them up, pinch them together. Um, I haven't yet, but if you get a little brush, you can actually little blend those. So that's a way to fix the mistake if you're trying to get it nice and neat to the edge. So I ended up basically carpeting everything that was plied that goes from the doors 
to the side walls. I ended up doing the roof, cutting that out and measuring it, and then obviously carpeting that as well. And as far as the roof, I ended up obviously insulating the top, putting the loft insulation up in between the ply line and the ceiling, and also then obviously put the ceiling in. The ceiling was kind of a two-man job to put it in. Um, you can't really do that by yourself unless you're an absolute monster. As for the bed, I wanted something that would fold off the side wall so that I could obviously fit in another bike or if I ever wanted to just go away with my missus, it is potentially just have a double bed on the floor. So it folds down off the side wall and it simply uses uh, just a little lashing strap to hold it up and then the legs all fold out and at the end here there is storage. So usually I have my sleeping bag stored in there. The actual bed itself is about five foot eight, I believe, and I'm just over six foot. But when you fold down the front seat, I can lie completely flat and uh, it's literally just my feet off the end. So it works really well. So the legs are held in with cabinet magnets and I believe they're up to a six kilo hold. Um, I think I might go for a 10 kilo possibly, I might change them. Um, the bed itself is held up with the lashing strap and they've just got anchors attached to them and then literally it just comes down just like that. Obviously the bike goes next to me um, and I have my front wheel up in this mount up here and then I've got a through axle mount at the front. Now for both of those I do have a discount code and they're with JR3DS and he actually 3D prints those. So check them out in the description. I'll give you a close up on those in a second. And I hold my front wheel and my bike all together right where I need it. So that's actually part one of the van build video. And when I look to release part two, I hope to have a few extra things added to the van. Uh, but at the moment, this is like the basic setup. Um, so I'm just waiting on things uh, like a, a new mattress, curtain, got my curtain pole, everything like that. So um, when I add all that in, I'll do a part two. But hopefully you guys found that video helpful and you enjoyed seeing something a little different on the channel. But uh, that's it for today, guys. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you on the trail.